Ladies and gentlemen, I know we just said we're going on midseason break, but we are back with another bonus. Stay busy with Armand Sadler episode for you. I am, of course, Armand Sadler, head honcho, vegan chorizo, poppy, all that good stuff. Not going to bog you down with the nicknames because we got to get right to it. This week, I spoke with someone who I've had the pleasure of not just meeting virtually, but meeting in person um, on multiple occasions and just seeing his rise over the last couple years has been absolutely incredible. He is a former NXT North American champion, a two-time and the current NXT champion, none other than Mr. Let's Talk About It, Trick Willie himself, Trick Williams. And obviously, we discussed his upcoming match at NXT 2300 with Bubba Ray Dudley against Rich Holland and Ethan Page. But, you know, I think the the biggest gem of the conversation was how personal uh, Trick got and just looking back at his journey, even before he got into WWE and, uh, you know, playing college football. And uh, he, he really laid it all out there. And it was it was great that he, you know, felt that level of comfort to to share all that with me. And we also discussed NXT, NXT Women's Division, um, his relationship with Lash Legend, which I'm sure all those Stan accounts are going to love to to clip up and post. But just a really great conversation with a really great guy. Um, and he's got some he's got some stuff coming music wise for y'all as well. So we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, you are going to hear my conversation with the man himself. Whoop that trick. Trick Williams. <laughs> I'm here with the man himself, Trick Willie, Mr. Let's Talk About It, two-time NXT champion, NXT North American champion. Trick, how, how are you, man? Hey, man, I'm blessed. I'm happy to be here. Get ready for Wednesday, man. We're heading to the ECW arena. Let's talk about it. Absolutely. Let's talk about it. Man, it's um the third time's a charm. This is my third time speaking with you, connecting with you, and each time it's been such a significant moment. I remember I met you at SummerSlam 2023 weekend. You were getting ready for your matches with Dragunov. And then mm-hmm. I met you um, WrestleMania weekend where you just main evented uh, Stand Deliver and defeated Carmelo Hayes. And you were on the road to winning the NXT title for the first time. Now we're talking again. You're a two-time NXT champion. You're getting ready for uh, a match at a legendary arena. Just how do you feel uh, about this journey you've been on? And what have you learned about yourself throughout it? Man, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, man. I'm grateful, man. I'm. It's relieving to find out that you're not crazy. You know, like, you know, I'm going to turn to an inspirational speaker for a second, but, you know, it's real. Like, before any of these things happen, before, you know, my life started taking off, I feel like in this direction, like, I have faith that, you know, you can do these things. But I think um, a lot of times, like, it's just that waiting period, like, you know, scared to jump, scared to take a chance on yourself scared of what failure may look like, you know what I mean? Scared of what people think. You know, I don't know how much time I got, but I'm going to get into it. Like, you know, I think the first time I had to learn how to jump was I was at Hampton University. And you know, I love Hampton. Shout out to my HBCUs. You know, it was a great experience for me. But football just wasn't it at the time. And, you know, I wanted to transfer to the University of South Carolina, being the number four team in the nation, you know, my hometown, closer to my family and everything like that. And like, honestly, I got scared. Like, man, I left and came back because I got scared and I regretted it. And then, you know, when things started shaking down, like my you no know, life just started getting terrible. You know what I mean? I got hurt and all these different things happening. But it's like, I knew the whole time I was supposed to be at the University of South Carolina. So it took me an extra year to like, I had to quit the team and then transfer to the school that I knew that I was supposed to be at. But I remember thinking, like, dang, man, like, I wasted a year of my life right here. But once I got to South Carolina, a lot of you not, like, my life just continued to escalate and get better. Like, you know, I'm breaking it down. I wasn't planning to do this, but we're talking now. But, you know, South Carolina being, like, number four team in the nation. Hampton being a Division One double A, like, smaller level school, you know, nowhere near being ranked. And... It's just crazy to me. Like, I wasn't appreciated much as a football player at Hampton. I went to South Carolina and was MVP, offense, newcomer, walk on, stand out, starting, you know, the first opportunity I got. I'm like, wow, man, like, that's this is what taking a chance on yourself looks like. This is the outcome of it. This is trusting in God, believing in what God has for your life. And I just think if I would have never just 
took that chance, then who knows what I would have been doing, wasting time at the place that I wasn't supposed to be. And I think at that moment, I learned how important it was to jump and take chances and to believe in yourself. If God puts something in your spirit, then you got to jump. You got to move. You can't ask your friends. You can't ask people around you, like, hey, is this the right thing for me? Like, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Like, You know what you're supposed to be doing. And it might not be popular. And you might be the first one to do it. So you don't you don't have nobody else to look at. But, you know, you know before there's a transfer portal, like Trip Williams created the transfer portal. Like I transferred <laughs> up, you know what I mean? And, you know, I took a chance on myself, no scholarship. And yep. just looking at how things unfold in my life, like I'm just grateful because I've been, you know, I've had that faith for a long time now. I love that, man. I love that. That's that's an inspiration to anyone. Anyone who's listening to this, to take that chance on yourself, believe in yourself, even if it seems crazy to you or crazy to the people around you, there's a reason that that feeling of conviction is within you because you can achieve great things. Um, and I, I, that's a perfect segue. I, I, I'll, I'll bring it back to the friendship you had with Carmelo Hayes and kind of how that fell apart because you took a chance on yourself. You yes. decided, like, it's my time to step up. I want to contend for the NXT championship. And clearly, Melo wasn't completely feeling that. And, and we saw how, how all of that shook out. Looking back on those moments, how did it feel to kind of deal with the tension that, that bubbled up between you two and ultimately seeing that, that it worked out for you in the end? The belief that you had for yourself in becoming a champion worked out for you in the end. For sure, for sure. I think the cool thing to learn here for me, Armand, was like tension isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, sometimes tension is necessary. You know, like say, say working with Melo, if I was just, you know, so comfortable and so happy being there and he was so happy that I was there, then like I wouldn't have felt that urge to do what I needed to do. You know what I mean? Like sometimes that tension of like, man, it's crowded. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I got to share this space with Melo. Melo has to share this space with me. And the people love us being together. Like, I enjoyed it. Like, we was truly friends. We still are friends. Yeah. But, you know, but it was crowded. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, Carmelo Hayes is a competitor, and he wants to be that guy. And at the end of the day, Trip Williams is a competitor, and I will be that guy. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens. You know what I mean? If if I don't – if it, if it wasn't tension, if it wasn't uncomfortable – then who knows? Maybe I'll like I'll I'll sit in my spot right here where I'm at. And right. um I'm I'm grateful for the tension. I'm grateful for the spot I was in when I had to watch Melo do his thing because I learned a lot in that spot. Right. You know it's crazy. I mean, I'm I'm going off on a tangent, but I'm comfortable <laughs> with your mind. But I appreciate Lil that. Wayne had Lil Wayne had a uh his reunion tour back in New Orleans, mm -hmm. uh Louisiana. And he brought the hot boys back with him, you know, Manny Fresh, Juvenile, you know, BG, you know what I mean, Turk. And I was like, man, like, I was just thinking about that for a moment because that's such a such a crazy thing because, like, the whole dynamic of the hot boys was Lil Wayne was the youngest. He was the newest one to the game. But Lil Wayne, I seen the interview, he said, man, I know I got talent. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be commercial. I ain't trying to do all these you know, ABC elementary bars, like, I can really rap. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and who knows, like, I don't know the guys, but shout out to Lil Wayne for taking a chance and knowing, like, hey, I know I'm the youngest one in this group. I know I got the least amount of experience, but I know what I can do. Fast forward 20 years later, they haven't been on the same stage in 20 years. Yeah. But Lil yeah. Wayne brought back all the hot boys. He brought back Birdman. He brought back everybody in New Orleans. And was able to share that moment with his boys. I'm like, man, that was just such a powerful thing to me because, like, you know, that's not the same Lil Wayne that they remember from way back in the day. That was a whole mm -hmm. new Lil Wayne, you know? So that was just really cool for me. Um, yeah. And that's how I feel, you know what I mean? Like, and if you know you got it, then you got it, and you got it, you got to take a chance with yourself. Absolutely. And and there is a, a, uh, a kind of... Um there's a positive to being the youngest or the person who's looked at as behind, you know, someone who's more front facing. I can speak as the youngest of two brothers. My, my parents called my, my, my older brother, the experiment, you know, going through college and just learning, you know, financial aid and all that. So by the time they got to me, 
they knew everything they had to do to put me in the position to be successful. So there is right. a really big strength to being the one who is observing people ahead of you who are older, who have more experience, because you can just take all that in. Then, then, and then when it's your time to take off, just like Trick Willie has over the last year, you, <laughs> the, the rocket ship is strapped and you, you know, you're good to go. Man, I'm grateful for that spot, man. Like, even though it was uncomfortable, even though, like, man, like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Like, no, like, sometimes you got to sit back and you actually got to learn, man. And mm-hmm. I'm going to give Carmelo Hayes his props because, you know, he was a great person to watch. If we're talking about work ethic, if we're talking about in-ring ability, you know, his seriousness on how he approached the game. Like, he, he was great. He carried NXT for, for a long time. Yeah. And... You know, and that that helped me a lot in my career. So, man, shout out to Carmelo Hayes, man. Uh, I'm glad he's doing big things. <laughs> For sure. And uh, speaking of reunions, um, I, th- I think everyone is waiting to see when and if Trick and Melo reunite on the main roster. Melo's doing <laughs> this thing right now, series with Andrade, beating Randy Orton. And, you know, right. I feel like just given his his ego and his pride, it may come a time where Melo's going to need some help. Like, would Trick Willie be willing to go up to the main roster, reunite? Trick Mellow Gang and, and help out Carmelo at some point? You know, I kind of feel like Jay in this situation. Mm. Uh, you know, what, what Jay told him, he said, you yeah, know, we can work together, but, you know, this dynamic is different now. You know what mm. I mean? Like, you heard the people. Yeah. It, it, you heard the people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jay's strutting. He's doing his thing. You know what I mean? And he said, I can't go back to being a yes man. And I feel that wholeheartedly, man. Like those yes man days are done. You know, yeah. will it be trick and mellow gang for sure? If it does happen, will it be like it was before? Yeah, I can't. I've outgrown that box. You know, mm-hmm. I can't go back, even if I wanted to. It don't fit. There we go. That's the right attitude. So let's let's bring it to present day. You have had a constant thorn in your side over the last few months in Ethan Page. A a newcomer who just immediately decided decided to target you. He ended up winning the NXT title in a fatal four way match, and you recently regained it to then become a two time NXT champion. What can you say about this rivalry with Ethan Page, and especially with the tag team match coming up with Ridge and Bubba Ray Dudley involved? Like, well, just what are your thoughts on Ethan Page throughout this rivalry? Ethan Page, man, this brother don't know when to quit, do he? <laughs> like dog you know what i'm saying he came to nst he jumped me day one he got his title match i beat him i was successful uh we ran it back in the fatal four way he lucked up and got the title off you know he had the title for what two months he avoided me he dipped dodge and ran from me for a long time and then once you know he had to have a rematch with me you know, I was successful. Mm-hmm. And but I get it though, because like Ethan Page, he's very talented. You know, he's a great, you know, he's a great competitor. He finds a way to get the job done. And man, once you get a taste of this goal, this goal right here, I got it posted up for you. Mm-hmm. But once you once you taste that, man, you don't want to let it go. You know what I mean? It's addictive. I don't have no tattoos, but I hear it's the same experience. Like once you get your first tattoo, it's like you can't stop. It's a Pringle. Yeah. So <laughs> You know, so Ethan Page, like, I understand his drive. I understand him, you know, being grinding in this business 17 years, putting in his dues and tasting the success, you know, getting to the top of the NXT card. Very fast, mind you. Very, very fast. Probably faster than anybody else that would do it. So shout out to Ethan for that. But not at my expense. You know what I mean? (laughs) Do what you do, but watch my shoes. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) I like that. (laughs) And now it's not just Ethan you have to deal with, but we've got Ridge Holland, who has been just kind of wrecking NXT, coming in, hurting people, breaking up factions, just hell bent on hurting people and being violent. What are your thoughts on what Ridge has done throughout his time coming back to NXT and in getting in the ring with someone like him and someone like Ethan Page? Well, what's your approach to it? You know, I just find it ironic. He spent all this time with Chase U, and now he wants to chase me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's going on, man? Like, this ain't had nothing to do with you. You came out, you was messing with Bubba Ray Dudley. 
you mm-hmm. know, the whole Halloween Havoc episode. And then you jump out after my match, you know, and Ridge is another guy. You know, we come from similar backgrounds. He comes from the athlete world and he's a specimen. Uh, he's been on the main roster. He's he worked with Sheamus. He's worked with Pete Dunne, the Butch. He's you know, he's he's been in some great situations. And I know, honestly, you know, of title defenses, Ridge might be one of my most you know challenging opponents because like he's done it. He's been there. But um. But what's wrong, brother? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> he, he, he got a chip on his shoulder, mm-hmm. and we don't we don't knock it off for him. There we go. There we go. And thankfully, you won't be alone. You know, throughout wrestling, there's always been these incredible moments of stars of today getting the rub from stars of yesterday, and you got a pretty pretty big rub in the help of one Bubba Ray Dudley. How excited are you to team up with Bubba Ray Dudley at? NXT 2300 in the legendary ECW arena. Just I, I like aside from wanting to get your hands on Ethan and Ridge, just like how do you feel as a wrestling lover teaming up with Bubba Ray Dudley? Yeah, man, we're going back to his home, his roots of ECW. We're going back to a city I'm familiar with, Philadelphia. And um, and Bubba, man, like what else can I say about him? He's a legend, he's a Hall of Famer. Uh that that segment we had on Tuesday, that that opening promo we did. Um, I just felt like there was a difference working with a guy like like Bubba. I feel like he brought something out of me, you know, that I haven't been able to, you know, probably duplicate, you know, mm. in in a long time, you know, just working across from, you know, because I could feel, you know, the passion in every word that he said, which, you know, and I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna meet him, you know what I'm saying, to the best of my ability, so. Man, saying all that to say, man, it's great working with a legend. And there's a reason why he is a Hall of Famer. You know, you can feel mm-hmm. it when when he works. So I'm excited about this. Yeah, and 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 you're no stranger to working with Dudley's. I remember the uh <laughs> the very popular tricky whooping music video where, where you took it back to Chuch on us. <laughs> I took it back to Chuch. <laughs> <laughs> with Devon yeah. Dudley, man. I love that. I love the flip of the Kirk Franklin record. With with these music videos and music ideas, is, is it you coming up with these? Do you have a team of people helping you? Because they're they're very creative, they're very elaborate. We see the superstars joining in. Like, what what yeah. what goes into all this? Man, it's it's my ideas. Like, I write the lyrics. I do everything like that. Like, I get a vision for who I'm working against and like where we can go with it. But man, I have a great team around me. Man, uh, I have a supportive woman on you know on my side. Uh, and I got a, you know, a team of videographers and everything who like, they love the work. They're like, yo, let's do this. Hell, we can hook it up like this. We can hook it up like that, man. Like I'm a man of the people, you know what I mean? Like people want to, you know, hey, Trey, what's the vision, man? We want to help you bring your vision to life. And I'm grateful for that. You know what I mean? Because man, the support that I've received since being here at NAC has been amazing. And there's a lot of people who who put a lot of work into what you see I'm able to do, you know, on TV and these personal projects that I'm able to put out. So now I'm grateful for everybody who who helps me and supports me. Mm, absolutely. How'd, how'd you feel when you see saw Ethan Page put out his own rap video? <laughs> Yo, I ain't gonna lie. It was pretty good. <laughs> you know, he, he, a little, he a little too spooky, a little too down with the devil for me. So I'm like, oh, I know where I'm going with it. Mm-hmm. But hey, man, And that's one thing I can say about Ethan Page, man. Like, he's willing to lay it all on the line. And in that way, I think we're actually somewhat similar because, I mean, we love this business. And we're going to do what it takes to put out the best performance possible. And I'm not sure how many people are willing to put in that type of time and effort. Those aren't easy to do. You know, write lyrics, find a beat, go to the studio, record, pay them, make a video, you know what I mean? Make it look good. And then ship it out. You know, in times, you know, you got a couple of days to do this. And then on top of that, it has to be good. You're not just doing it to do it. It has to be good. So the fact he was willing to go that extra mile, you know, to talk his trash and promote this match. You know, I respect that. And, you know, I'm glad that he met me there and, and challenged. Now we got tricky whooping. So it all worked <laughs> out. <laughs> absolutely absolutely you talked before about how you know the, the people love you the people want trick and I, man i can say like I've, been, I've had conversations with people where you are being put in the list the short list of people who are being called nxt's biggest star ever 
like the most the, the organic fan reactions that you get the love for your theme song booker t doing the ad libs like you exemplify what it is to be a star in in the clothes in the way you talk in the way you carry yourself all of that do do you think about yourself in, in that light as being one of nxt's biggest stars especially knowing all the talent elite talent that that's come through do you ever think of yourself in comparison to them uh like you know it's kind of hard to just kind of step back and look at it for what it is right now because like when you win it like man it's all about staying on top of your game and nxt is a very very competitive place you know we're full of athletes from all different backgrounds wrestling football basketball gymnastics you know, I mean, our ladies division is going crazy. Probably one of the strongest ever NXT roster women's that we've ever seen. Um, with all that being said, I got to be on top of my game. And I think it's just too early for me to sit back and, oh, I've done this and done that. Like, now in my mind, I have so much more that I need to do, you know, to be where I want to be. So, um, yeah, I, I, I can't do that yet. You know what I mean? Because that's, I don't want to get complacent. It ain't time mm-hmm. for that. I respect that. I respect that. That's, that's a great perspective to have, man. Absolutely, for sure. Um, yeah. you, you're rocking the Eagles jersey. Who's who, yeah, whose jersey is that, by the way? I yeah, see I'm going to give you a preview. I don't ah, know if it's backwards. Custom. Is it backwards <laughs> or can you read it? Yeah, I can read it. <laughs> T. Willie. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, I went to camp with the Eagles, that, and I, I rock in the number eight, and this was a gift. Actually, my boy Julius Creed, he got me this jersey. And uh, I'm like, man, what better time than we're going back to Philly. We're going to put on the T. Willie jersey, rocking the number eight. Mm-hmm. So, well, it's a salute to Creed for that, man. That's, that's, that's dope. But um, I, I've noticed I, I attend a lot of live sporting events, baseball, basketball, football, and these wrestling themes are getting played a lot at these sporting events, whether it's Roman Reigns, whether it's Cody Rhodes, whether it's CM Punk. And I don't know, man, one day I would love to be at a football game and just hear whoop that trick (laughs) over the speakers. Like, bro, the the Memphis Grizzlies, if man, man, we need to get this to them ASAP. You know, Mm -hmm. shout out to John Morant. He's doing great things. But Memphis is the home of the whoop that trick champ. You know what I mean? But uh, you've seen the movie Hustle and Flow, of course. Of course. But uh, I'm actually good friends with a guy named Al Capone. I'm not sure if we talked about this before, but he's the original songwriter of Whoop That Trick. He's from Memphis, Tennessee. And um, he gave me the blessing to use, you know, the chant and the phrase early on in my career when he saw it was popping up. So, you know, Memphis understands and appreciates the Whoop That Trick. You know, John Morant, you know, he's doing his thing. Let's give the people what they want, man. Play that trick, Willie Anthem. And right there for the Grizzlies and watch it go crazy. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. (laughs) Undeniably, man. Uh, You you brought her up earlier, so I got to ask, man. Lash Legend, she has been on main roster the last couple weeks doing her thing. Big win over Piper Niven, fighting at Crown Jewel, big matches on SmackDown. I was at the Barclays SmackDown when she was in the Fatal 4-Way going toe-to-toe with Lash. She killed it. Yeah, yeah, she was doing her thing, man. She was doing her thing. How, How does it feel to be joining the the list of wwe power couples and also seeing like the genuine love you two are getting from fans man honestly like you know i'm not big on the you know like i like to keep you know what's personal personal but you know we did that that segment a while back i guess um you know when i did that pop put the booze on it and everything Uh (laughs) and um like the reception, I feel that like we both have gotten has been amazing. You know, it's cool, and um, she's just a good person, man. And knowing how hard she works, how much time she puts into the craft, you know. And aside from that, you know, like selfishly, like how she has supported me and everything that I have going on. Mm-hmm. So to see her get that love reciprocated, and how people are drawn to her and love her and appreciate her for her talent, I mean, it's awesome to see. And she is that good. We all knew that. And, you know, people don't, I don't think people realize, like, how much it takes out of you to go out there and perform and put on a good show. And, you know, and when you're not able to do that, it hurts. So, so her being able to show what she can do, you know, it's just getting started. 
But man, she deserves that moment. And I'm sure this is just the beginning for her. And I'm so excited for her. Absolutely. Yeah. It was it was really dope when um when when we met up in April and you were doing the interview. Um, she was there. She was there, but by your side, just watching it, just just there supporting, just there being a presence. I'm like, that's that that's what I love to see. Like that that genuine, I'm there for you no matter what you're doing, watching you do selfless. your thing. She's selfless and it's it's amazing because I'm like, man, I didn't know that was possible to experience somebody who cared about you that much, you know what I mean? So um so yeah, I'm grateful for her, man. Like I can't there's nothing else to say. Like she deserves yeah. anything that she anything that she can get. Absolutely. Trick, I gotta admit, man, I'm I'm very surprised to see you wearing a shirt. Like <laughs> you, you, Bro, you usually have <laughs> And I thought about taking a pair of scissors and just splitting the jersey right down the middle, you know, just to mm-hmm. stay true to myself. But like, you know, you know, we're going back to Philly and Philly's been so good to us, man. So I was gonna show a little Philly love today. You know, I wore crazy enough, we had Raw in Philly um a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And uh Lash had a match and I was there uh during another segment, I believe. And I wore a turtleneck. Now, of course I had my my button up shirt, but it was cold in Philly. <laughs> and you know, Armand, people clown me on Twitter because, oh, Trick got a shirt on. You know, <laughs> I, <laughs> I get it. Mm-hmm. I, I never wear shirts and, you know, but it was cold that day, man. It was cold. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's funny, man. I um well one time I, I compared you to J.R. Smith from 2016 when after the Cavs when they won, won the, he, uh, yeah, the final. <laughs> he ain't wear a shirt for a week. <laughs> Same energy. Yo, he was he was lit on the party bus, and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was a funny time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh you talked about the NXT women's division, and it's been it's just grown over the years. Like it's it to me, it's the best women's division that they've ever had and that like of any any companies like obviously you're focused on yourself and what you're doing but how enjoyable is it to watch what's happening on the show around you especially seeing all these new talents coming in new talents getting better like just what's it like to to be part of it but then also be a fan of what's happening around you yeah man it's a beautiful thing i mean like you know selfishly feel like man like the success of you know, me and my peers, you know, the guys who I'm talking, you know, the end of black and gold, but especially 2.0 and on where we completely changed what NXT looks like. And back to what we said, you know, at the beginning of this, it might not have been the popular thing or the thing that everybody had faith in. But, you know, me, me and our boys and, and the ladies, of course, we had a vision of what we wanted to do here at NXT. You know, I'm talking about Melo, I'm talking about Dragunov, Grayson Waller, of course, Brian Breaker, the Crees, Tony D'Angelo. And people was talking about us, you know what I mean? Like, oh, what are they doing? This show is terrible. You know, we missed Black and Gold. Black and Gold was a great era, not denying that. But, man, we kind of locked in and said, nah, no, we we got something great here. We're going to make some shape, you know, just for us to double down on that, flip that deal to NXT. Now we got a bigger contract than we've ever seen here. We're part of the CW and we make a noise and it's getting better and better, you know, every single week. So to be part of that is awesome. Uh, The women's division is crazy because I legit, a lot of you not, I think there's probably 20 women on the roster right now who could be a competitor for Roxanne, Mm -hmm. you know, for that title. And I'm not even exaggerating. I was just counting up there. Like, yo, there's a lot of people. And he's still got people coming back like Gigi. And so I'm like, this is crazy. So it's awesome for women's wrestling, for them getting their flowers, getting their love, because these women are good, man. Like, if you want to be part of NXT today, it's probably one of the hardest times of ever to get your foot in the door, which is cool about the ID thing as well. Uh, different yes. indie promotions being able to, you know, get looked at. Now, I, I still got some friends who who are training that rope. You know, my boy Big Tito Lincoln. Uh, the Kentish Bros. Uh, I trained at Knox Pro for a little while, um, so just knowing that you know these are my these are people who are like minded, you know, people who love the business, who have dreams of being on TV and performing at a very high level. So yeah. you know, I'm hoping that hey, you know, 
they work hard for this. They deserve opportunities as well. Absolutely. Uh, well, we got to talk music real quick before we close up. Um, are you an Apple Music or a Spotify user? I'm Apple Music. I'm Apple Music. Apple, Apple. Okay. If you had to yeah. guess, what five artists do you think are going to show up on your Apple replay uh, at the end of the year? <laughs> if I had to guess. Yo, so, bro, I'm an old soul, so this is pretty tough. No mm. exaggeration, probably Juvenile is one of them. You know? Okay. Man, I love Juvenile. Uh, definitely a uh, big X to plug. Uh, you know, he's probably my favorite new artist that's out right now. Uh, man, Ludacris. I'm a big Ludacris, you know, proponent fan. Um, someone more current. We already said big X. Uh, who am I rocking with? And, hmm. Big X is the biggest new one. Uh, the thing is, I listen to a lot of R and B as well. Okay, I feel like I'm always hyped and stuff. So, so when I want to chill and I go to the weight room, then I'm probably gonna put on some R and B. So mm. you know, I'm probably kicking it back. Tyrese, Genuine, you know, you know, something like that, and probably a little Bob Marley too. I got a little, <laughs> I, I got a little Yaman in me, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, so that's probably a little diverse lit. <laughs> That's a diverse list, but that's me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, obviously, I know you put out music in the past. You've been putting out these great music videos with regards to NXT. But as far as your individual music career, can the people expect an EP, a mixtape, album coming soon? Man, I'm actually I'm actually in the process of, of working some stuff. Um, it's crazy enough, you know, since that PD, uh, 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 uh song i dropped and producers have been reaching out like mm. hey you got some you know what i mean like i know you was probably <laughs> playing around or doing whatever on this track but you no know, people love this and it's actually a good song you know what i mean mm -hmm. you wrote that yourself like yeah i wrote it you know a little inspiration you know it's 50 cent but like yeah i wrote it you know i put it together so um which is crazy for me to see because like rapping is something we did on the back of the football bus to waste time, you know, yeah. on the way to the games, you know, it was fun. And, you know, when I dropped that joint on PD, it was fun. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like, you know, I always had this thing like, man, I don't want to be that, that guy who was, you know, making bad songs. <laughs> so, so I probably just never tried it, but yeah. now I'm thinking about it. Like, man, I can just be me and have fun. And so with all that being said, I think we got an EP dropping sometime in the future love that love that do, is do you have like two or three dream producers that you would love to work with man who kid uh okay who kid so we we did xm radio with him and uh i think this is honestly where it all started so i made a song a while ago called good like a wrestler and i was yep, just playing around with it and um then we went to do xm radio it was at you no know, wrestlemania weekend when we was in los angeles so I think that was two years ago. Yep. And um, we got booked to go with DJ Who Kid. I'm like, shoot, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'd be a fool to not come in with some bars ready just in case. You know what I mean? I'm with Who Kid. So um, he's like, man, you want to perform? I'm like, yeah. So I performed my song, Good Looking Wrestler. And I had a little, you know, a little eight, you know, eight bar, a little 12 bar, maybe a 16, maybe a 16 ready for him. And uh, it was it was it was crazy. It was dope. And yeah. who kid told me he's like, man, I know you not a rapper, but that was good stuff. What you just did, you know what I mean? And it sounded different than you know a lot of stuff people are doing today. So I thought that was mm -hmm. pretty cool. So I would love to be produced by who kid, maybe Metro. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know something like that, something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, awesome man awesome i can't i can't wait to hear it but most importantly i can't wait to see you and bubba ray take on ethan page and rich yes, holland right. this wednesday i want to offer you just congratulations on everything that you've done like especially having met you and seeing how nice of a guy you are it's dope to see the nice guys win and just the constant improvement the constant energy and aura that you bring to nxt man it's it's, it's a joy to watch you every week so Thank you for, for providing that for me and for the fans, man. 
Hey, look, man, I appreciate it. I remember meeting you in Detroit. Uh, I think almost, mm -hmm. almost uh, introduced us, and uh, yeah, I definitely remember that, bro. And I appreciate that and uh, having me on your on your show. So, thank you. Absolutely, man. Well, uh, viewers, you can check out Trick Williams and Bubba Ray Dudley taking on Ethan Page and Ridge Holland this Wednesday at NXT twenty three hundred only on the CW network and a bunch of other incredible matches. You can hear whoop that trick blaring through the speakers, Booker T's ad libs and trick doing his thing on Tuesdays, typically on NXT on CW. Um, but this has been my interview with trick Williams again. Thank you so, so much, man. And um, yeah, man, I, I just can't wait to watch. Hey, thanks so much. Armand. Thanks for having me. Of course, my guy.